Good evening, good evening to all pro wrestling fans from all around the world of all shapes and sizes. Welcome back to another pro wrestling talk video brought to you by Blitzball Champ Gaming here on the U to the Tube. I'm your host, Blitzball Champ, Jason Ingram. So, just wrapped up New Japan Pro Wrestling's The New Beginning in Sapporo. Nights one and night two. Yeah. Very interesting outcomes. Very interesting. Um Yeah. Let's 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 talk about it. Let's let's just talk about it. So both nights took place February 23rd and 24th at the Hokkaido Prefecture Sports Center in Hokkaido, Japan. Um, we're going to go through night one first, and then we'll go through night two. Um, but yeah, very, very interesting outcomes. But let's, let's go ahead and get started. Starting from the top. Alrighty, first match to kick off night one of the new beginning in Sapporo was a tag team match. We had the team of Toriano and Tomoya taking on the team of Shoma Kato and Tomoaki Honma. Uh, overall decent match. Nothing... Nothing too crazy for the most part. Um, not a long match, you know, maybe maybe six or seven minutes, but it was it was an all right match. You know, that's that's really all I can say. Um, and with it being a frontier zone match, I mean, got to see some new talent. So hey, some young new talent. So hey, I'm cool with it. Mm -mm. Can't say anything great or anything bad about this match, but it was all right. It was all right. But Tomoya submitted Shoma Kato with um, an octopus. It was kind of an octopus stretch. Apparently, it's called the La Ad Adichita 2005, according to the site. Apparently, that's what the move name is called, which... It's kind of a weird name, but that's what the move is called. But anyway, it was an all right match. That's all I can really say. All righty. Let's move on to our next match. We had ourselves a little technical show now. Thought it was pretty cool. We had Mr. Blue Justice himself, Yuji Nagata. Taking on Zack Sabre Jr. Like I said, decent match. Uh, wasn't long, but it was good to see these two go at it. Trade hold for hold, counter for counter. So, great technical struggle between these two. But, Zack Sabre Jr. got the best of the veteran, Yuji Nagata. Was able to lock him up in a cross-arm breaker, made him tap out. So... Um, nice little show of respect there at the end of the match with a bow from uh, Zack Sabre Jr. to Yuji Nagata. But yeah, pretty, pretty cool, pretty cool match overall. Alrighty, let's go to our next match. Ugh, here we go. We had ourselves a trios match. We had the team of Bolton Oleg, Togi Makabe, and Ryusuke Taguchi taking on House of Tortures, Yoshinobu Kanemaru, Yujiro Takahashi, and Ren Narita. I mean, what's there to really say? It, it's, it's House of Torture. Therefore, there was going to be shenanigans, and that there were. 
course, saw the that little uh, metal push-up bar being put into play. But honestly, eh. Just a lot of it's ruined just because of how House of Torture is. So, yeah. Not a match that I really enjoy, but it is what it is. But Ren Narita hits Togi Makabe with the double cross and then pinned him for the one, two, three. House of Torture on top. Lame, but that's what they do. That is what they do. That's why it's hard for me to be a fan. Anyway, let's go to the next match. Let's see here. All right, next match. Okay, so this was originally supposed to be a 10-man tag match, Chaos versus United Empire, but it got changed just a little bit as Hanare wasn't was not cleared to compete um, was still injured at the you know from the suffering of um, the cage match that they had uh, against Bullet Club so therefore Hanare was not able to compete in this match so they took him out and they took Hiroki Goto out just to make everything even. And this ended up turning into a eight-man tag match. So eight-man tag match. It came down to chaos of Yo, Yoshihashi, Tomohiro Ishii, and Kazuchika Okada. And they took on United Empire's Callum Newman, Jeff Cobb, Francesco Akira, and Great Okan. So that was your matchup for this match. Um, overall, good match. Definitely enjoyed it. Uh, like I said, good to see uh, Callum Newman again show off his speed and, and all that stuff. But, you know, this was a good back and forth match. Definitely enjoyed it. But Okada, the Rainmaker, was what put away... Newman, literally with a rainmaker, uh, covered him for the one, two, three. Chaos with the win. And even though Great Ocon was celebrating outside the ring, holding up the KOPW title, um, it was good to see um, the other members of Chaos uh, congratulate Okada. And just, you know, this was, you know, night one was. You know, his second to last match. So, of course, they got to get it all in while they still can. So, it was cool to see, you know, the members of Chaos, hands raised in victory. So, that was really cool to see. But, yeah. Overall, good match. All right. Let's go to our next match. Here we go. All right. We had the the big LIJ Just Five Guys showdown here. Ten man tag. So we had LIJ's Tetsuya Naito, Shingo Takaki, Yoda Suji, Hiromu Takahashi, and Bushi taking on Just Five Guys. Sonata, Taichi, Doki. Taka Michinoku, and Heat Storm, Yuyo Uemura. Um, another match I enjoy. Uh, like both of these factions going at it, and this was this was another pretty solid one. Um, definitely will be cool to see how they kind of continue this rivalry because I know they kind of break it down into some singles matches in in night two which you know I'll go over but I'm sure that in some way shape or form this rivalry is probably going to last a while 
But this was a good, solid match. And Shingo Takaki picked up the victory for his team, uh, putting away Taka Minchinoku after hitting him with a pumping bomber. Covered him for the 1-2-3. LIJ with the victory going into night two. So that was big momentum for LIJ. Okay. Are y'all ready for some championship matches? I think it's about time for some championship matches. All right. Let's get to the championship matches. First up, we had the ladies. All righty. We had the IWGP Women's Championship on the line. As Mayu Iwatani, the champion, the leader of stars, the icon of stardom, put the title on the line against EXV's Mina Shirakawa. And shout outs to both ladies for rocking some new gear for this match. A uh, solid match from both ladies. Uh, definitely Mina Shirakawa looked really strong in this match, and she really took it to Mayu Iwatani. Really did. Um, but the icon of stardom would not be denied. Uh, even though it took a lot of back and forth, and both of these ladies did excellent for this match. But Mayu Iwatani, still your champ after she was able to put away Mina Shirakawa with a two-stage dragon suplex. So that makes four? Four or five? No, I think that's four successful title defenses for uh, Mai Iwatani. Yeah. Yeah, now that I think of it, because that's, let's see, Utami Hayashishita, Stephanie Fakir, Shuri, Mina Shirakawa. So yeah, that should be four. That should be four successful defenses. But, and dang, now Mina Shirakawa's 0-3 in singles matches against Mayu. Ugh. It's a bummer. It's really a bummer. But Mayu Iwatani, still your IWGP Women's Champion. And I believe... Um, I'm trying to think who might be next in line. Because I believe Starlight Kid... Maybe Starlight Kid wants a shot at that. But I'm trying to figure out who who next who would be in line next. But I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Should be interesting. All right, let's keep it going. Oh God! <sighs> Here we go with this one. Next up, we have the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship on the line. As the champion, El Desperado, defended against House of Torture's show. Man, they overbooked the mess out of this match. I mean, not only was it full of all sorts of shenanigans, but just... The way show one was just ridiculous. And it really bothers me because, like, you know, I like the in-ring ability of the members of House of Torture, but just the fact that pretty much every victory or, or just every match in general, they have to resort to shenanigans. It's just, it's annoying. It's really, really annoying. And it sucks because show is very capable of, of winning that title on his own. But. Yeah. It's just really ridiculous. All the interference. All the shenanigans from House of Torture. The lights going out. You know. Just. It was ridiculous. It was really ridiculous. 
and <laughs> show ended up winning this match by a freaking count out and yeah title can change hands on a count out in New Japan Pro Wrestling uh, even though there was a moment where uh, El Desperado had a flash of help from Yusuke Taguchi just it wasn't enough I mean with House of Torture they, they're gonna have the numbers game they're gonna have the numbers game and just El Despero was Desperado was down and out was not and was kept from getting back into the ring to beat the 20 count and therefore Sho is your new IWGP junior heavyweight champion it's freaking lame just how it all went down really lame anyway moving on Okay, next up, here we go with more crazy, messed up shenanigans. We have the Never Open Weight Championship on the line. It's the champion, Evil, defended against Shota Umino. And like I said, full of shenanigans. Shota Umino got to a point where it looked like he was going to pick up the victory. Then one of the members of House of Torture rang the bell just abruptly. And just, you know, kudos to Shota for hanging on as long as he could and fighting for as long as he could. But just the numbers game. The numbers game was too much for Shota Umino. And, you know, it's just, it's a bummer. It's a bummer. But this... This night was pretty much in the hands of House of Torture. But Evil was able to win uh, hitting a Everything is Evil on Shota Umino. Covered him for the 1-2-3. Evil still your never open weight champion. So freaking lame. Anyways... Next up, we had the NJPW World Television Championship on the line. As the champion, Mr. Ace President Hiroshi Tanahashi defends against the King of Bros, Matt Riddle. Uh... Decent match, of course, you know, not as long as it could have been, which, I mean, all NJPW World Television title matches have a 15-minute time limit, so can't expect them to be, you know, crazy long ever or anything like that. But I don't think this one even went over 10 minutes. But went back and forth. Matt Riddle looked really confident. In this match and honestly both competitors look good they did their thing but sure enough Matt Riddle the king of bros was able to put away mr. ace president Hiroshi Tanahashi hit him with a bro stone aka the bro Derek pinned him for the one two three and Matt Riddle, just like that, is your new NJPW World Television Champion. First title shot, and he wins. Wow. Wow. And just like that. And that's only Tanahashi's second defense of this title. And bam. We got a new champion. Wow. So that's, that's two title changes. But now, let's go to the main event. Main event came down to this. 
we had the IWGP Global Heavyweight Championship on the line in the main event. As the champion, the leader of Bullet Club War Dogs, David Finley, defending against making his New Japan Pro Wrestling debut, Nick Nemeth, a.k.a. formerly Dolph Ziggler. Well, the match was solid. I will say that. The match was very solid. Um, Nick Nemeth got quite a, quite a swollen whelp under his, uh, under his right eye. But these two went at it. These two went at it back and forth. I know Gato tried to be, get involved and, you know, these two were beating the mess out of each other. We saw the shillelagh involved and in being used. But Nick Nemeth looked really strong in this match. And he was determined. He was definitely determined to win this match. And sure enough, in Dave Finley's first defense, he loses to Nick Nemeth. As Nick Nemeth hit him with the Danger Zone, formerly known as the Zigzag. Pinned him for the 1-2-3. And ladies and gentlemen, in his debut match, Nick Nemeth is your new IWGP Global Heavyweight Championship champion. <sighs> like, what the heck is up with just having these folks come in, they instantly get a title shot, and they win? Like, <sighs> some of this booking is just, it's, it's very sus. It's very sus. I mean... And don't get me wrong, I, I like Matt Riddle, but really? Already he dethrones Mr. Ace President in a second title defense? Ugh. And, you know, David Finley, I felt, had been on the rise since winning that Global Heavyweight Championship. I mean, he's the inaugural champion, but... Just like that, now Nick Nemeth and his debut match is now your champion. And it's, you know, nothing against him, but it's like, dang. Like, I don't know what to say. I don't, I don't know what to say. It's just, some of this booking is just sus. It just, it's a head scratcher. It's a head scratcher. But anyway, that was night one of The New Beginning in Sapporo. Before we go into night two, there's a quick word on the, the sponsor of this video, Game Beauty. Check them out. As you continue to enjoy content here at Blitzball Champ Gaming, be sure you take a moment to check out Game Beauty. Beauty inspired by gaming. Game Beauty brings to you video game related makeup and cosmetic products. You have products such as eyeshadow palettes, elemental pearl highlighters, eyeshadow brushes, liquid eyeliner pens by Akidiris, and even non makeup products like graphic tees. They even have special collaboration makeup kits such as this Persona 5 Heat Wave Brush Single, Metaverse Bundle, and even a Phantom Thieves limited edition makeup collection. Also remember that Game Beauty provides international shipping of $60 or more. And if you use the promo code BLITZBALLCHAMP all in caps, you can get 10% off of your order. So be sure to use that 
to your advantage. Now, back to your regularly scheduled video. Enjoy, and thank you. Alrighty, let's go right in to night number two of the new beginning in Sapporo. Starting off with our first match. Alright, this is another Frontier Zone match. This time, had the same team of Tomoya and Toriyano. This time taking on the team of Katsuya Murashima and Tomaki Honma. Um, I actually thought this this match was a, a little bit more intense this time around than the previous match. I felt like uh, Morishima definitely brought it more than um, Shoma Kato, just in my honest opinion. I just felt like this match was a little bit more intense than the first one, but still a pretty decent match. Um, Tomoya got the pen on Murashima after hitting him with an SOD to pick up the victory for him and Toriano. So, hey, two back-to-back -back victories for Tomoya and Toriano, both times with Tomoya getting the pinfall. So, hey, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Alrighty, let's move on to our next match. Oh, here we go. Next match. Okay. So, for this match, had ourselves a 10-man tag. We had the team of Bolton Oleg, Yo, Togi Makabe, El Desperado, and Shota Umino all taking on House of Torture, made up of Evil, Sho, Ren Narita, Dick Togo, and Yujiro Takahashi. So uh, Yoshinobu, um, or actually, it was originally supposed to be Dick Togo, but he ended up being replaced by uh, Yoshinobu Kanemaru. So instead of Dick Togo, we had Yoshinobu Kanemaru. So just had to mention that. Um, now, of course, in night one, night one was pretty much dominated by House of Torture. So honestly, it wouldn't have surprised me if that continued into night two. But, but, thankfully, it did not. Thankfully, it did not. Um, this was definitely a back and forth match. And, you know, I was really, really happy with the results of this one because... As I've said before, I can't stand House of Torture. And, you know, it looked like they were going to pull a fast one again in this match. But, thankfully, the good guys were able to pull off the victories this time. And Shota Umino got himself some good revenge in this match. He was able to hit a blaze on Yoshinobu Kanemaru and then put him away with a Death Rider pinning him for the 1-2-3. Shota Umino picks up the victory for his team. After the match, there was a video that played on the big on the big screen, and it was scapegoat Jack Perry, formerly Jungle Boy, which it was pretty funny that Shota Umino mentioned him on the mic as Jungle Boy, but it sounds like, sounds like a challenge, potentially a challenge, perhaps for Windy City Riot. Jack Perry, Shota Umino, hey, I'd be down. I'd totally be down. I can dig that. So we'll, we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, looks like 
eventually scapegoat. Jack Perry will finally make his in-ring New Japan Pro Wrestling debut. So, look forward to it. Looking very forward to it. Alrighty. Let's go into our next match. Alright. Next match. Okay, this one also this one also had a change as well. So it was supposed to originally be uh, team number one, Okada, Tanahashi, Ishii, and Bishamon together, but due to the injury to uh, Mr. Ace President, Hiroshi Tanahashi, um, he got replaced by Toriyano. So Toriyano ended up doing double duty for night two. So we ended up with a 10-man tag match of full unit of chaos of o Kazuchika Okada, Toriyano, Tomohiro Ishii, Hiroki Goto, and Yoshihashi. And they ended up taking on the team of Matt Riddle and United Empire's Jeff Cobb, Great Okan, Francesco Akira, and instead of Hanare, who was injured, um, who also didn't compete in night one, he was replaced by Calum Newman. Calum Newman. So, a couple, couple of changes there, but you know, that happens when you have injury. You've got to make adjustments. So, you could pretty much say this was a clear run back of night one. Uh, just, you know, slightly different. But, run back between Chaos and United Empire. This was really good. Very action-packed. And, sure enough, it pretty much ended up a repeat of Night 1. Because, just like Night 1, <laughs> Okada once again gets the victory for his team hitting Calum Newman with a Rainmaker and pinning him for the 1-2-3. Just like night one. It's kind of a bummer seeing him take take the pin twice in a row. Because I like Calum Newman. I really do. I love his speed. And I'm, I'm just glad he got to be showcased uh, in back-to-back -back shows. It just sucks seeing him have to eat the pin. But I get it. I get it. Um, and, you know, one last moment there for Okada and his Chaos stable mates. They, they shared a moment. They hugged each other, stood tall in victory. Um, he got on the mic one last time. And you know what? I'm pretty sure this won't be the last time we see Okada in New Japan Pro Wrestling. You know, I understand he's going to be focusing on wrestling in the states where it is it's looking like it's going to be AEW so we'll see how that goes but I'm pretty sure this will not be the last time we see the Rainmaker in New Japan Pro Wrestling or in Japan period so just you know I'm looking forward to how Okada's career, the direction his career goes, and what's next in store for him. And if it's AEW, great. If it's WWE, great. I just I just can't wait to see what's next for him. Can't wait to see what's next for him. But yeah, I'm happy. You know, he's able to finish strong in the new beginning in Sapporo, both night one and night two. So yeah, best of luck to the Rainmaker. Kazuchika Okada, and, you know, I'm pretty sure, you know, Chaos will be fine. It doesn't look like a disbandment. At least I imagine it's, it's not a disbandment. So, yeah. I, I, I still think Chaos can continue going forward, but who knows? Anyway... Let's move on 
to our next match, and this was actually a very enjoyable match. Check this one out. Okay, we had a Gorillas of Destiny showdown. We had the original Gorillas of Destiny of Tamatanga and Tangaloa, who were sporting the face paint. You know, something we haven't seen them wear in a long time. I think it's been a couple of years since they've done that face paint. Uh, taking on uh, the Gorillas of Destiny of the current uh, strong openweight tag team champions of Hikaleo and El Fantasmo. And Jado was the special guest referee for this match. That's right. Special guest referee Jado. And even Tamatanga Tangaloa came out to their old Gorillas of Destiny theme song. So I thought that was really cool. Felt like the stage was set very nicely for this match. And both teams went at it full force, back and forth. And I tell you, both teams look great form, especially Tamatanga in excellent form. And this was a very enjoyable match from start to finish. I was very pleased with the back and forth of both teams. It really could have gone either way. And, you know, had a good showdown there between Hikaleo and Tamatanga. So it was just, it was awesome. It was awesome from start to finish. Jado did a good job as special guest referee, called it down the middle. And it was just good seeing family battle it out. Family battled it out. And, man, the numerous number of counters between um, Hikaleo and Tamatango was just awesome. Like, so many gun stun attempts and so many godsend attempts. It was just, it was all over the place. But Hikaleo was able to put away Tamatanga. He finally was able to hit him with the godsend, pinned him for the one, two, three. And the strong open weight tag team champions of Hikaleo and El Fantasmo pick up the victory and an emotional farewell there from Tamatanga, who is said to be leaving New Japan Pro Wrestling. So had quite a farewell there. And we'll see what's next for Tamatanga. Uh, there have been rumors, potentially WWE, but... We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I'm going to keep an open mind. I'm going to keep an open mind. But we'll see what happens. But great match. Alrighty. Let's move on to our next match. Tag team match. Alrighty. This time we had the team of Ryusuke Taguchi and newly crowned uh, NJPW, or, or I'm sorry, IW, IWGP Global Heavyweight Champion Nick Nemeth taking on Bullet Club War Dogs of leader David Finlay and Gato. Um, thought this was a very entertaining match. Uh, some great chemistry there between uh, Nick Nemeth and Ryusuke Taguchi. I thought thought they did a good job teaming up. That was their, their first time teaming up. They did good. A lot of chemistry there. Um, and, <laughs> of course, Gato took the, the brunt of the offense from Nick Nemeth and Ryusuke Taguchi. But it was a very entertaining match from both teams. And, you know, it's good to see every now and then Gato in the in an official match. But Nick Nemeth was able to get the victory for his team, put, put Gato away with a danger zone, pinned him for the 1-2-3, two, and two back-to-back -back victories for the IWGP Global Heavyweight Champion of Nick Nemeth. And then afterwards, he got on the mic, and he addressed... Hiroshi Tanahashi, because one, he reminded him that he wanted, he originally wanted to team up with him for a tag team match, but then he also says that he wants to defend the IWGP Global 
heavyweight championship against Mr. Ace President Hiroshi Tanahashi. So hopefully when he recovers from his injury, that match can happen. I mean, that would be huge. That'd be the first time Nick Nemeth and Tanahashi square off. I mean, that'd be pretty big. And, you know, Nick Nemeth did a great promo, especially backstage after he won the uh, Global Heavyweight Championship. And, you know, it was, a, it was an epic promo. It was definitely an epic promo. And you know what? I was kind of shocked to see him win the title first match. But you know what? You know, let's, let's see what happens. I mean, Nick Nemeth looks to be very passionate about his time here in New Japan Pro Wrestling. I'd like to see how he does. Let's see how he does. I know he's also part of TNA Wrestling as well, but you know, I'm curious to see how he does in his New Japan Pro Wrestling career. So, keep it up, Nick Nemeth. Keep it up, got yourself a championship. Keep up the good work. Okay, and then next up, we started our series of singles matches between the factions of Just Five Guys and LIJ. So, first one up, we had LIJ's Bushi versus Just Five Guys Takamichinoku. I enjoyed the mess out of this match. I like both of these guys. Um, as some of y'all know, Bushi is actually my favorite. LIJ member, so love Bushi, I love his different mask, and Taka Minchinoku, I've been a fan ever since like the earlier days of, of WWF when he was light heavyweight champion, um, when he was with Kai and Tai, um, you know, didn't like some of the, you know, personal decisions he made later in his life, but I've always enjoyed Taka Minchinoku's work in the ring, and seeing these two go at it was very entertaining, went back and forth, I know Taka had a couple of just face lock attempts on uh, Bushi, and it just it went back and forth. It really could have gone either way. I really enjoyed this match from start to finish, and I would love to see these two duke it out again because this was very entertaining. But Bushi was able to get a submission victory, had like a kind of a modified figure four, and made Takamichinoku tap out. I was shocked. I You normally don't see Bushi get a submission victory, so I was very impressed. Very impressed. So congrats to Bushi on the submission victory. I did not see that coming. I really didn't, because he normally, he normally doesn't get submission victories. I usually see him hit an MX, and that's a wrap. But hey, kudos on the submission victory. Alrighty, next up, this was pretty much my favorite match of the whole card. This, I really think this this next match surprised a lot of folks on how awesome this was. And this, this was a much bigger match than I thought it was going to be. And for many great reasons. Check this out. Alright, in this singles match, we had LIJ's... Hiromu Takahashi taking on Just Five Guys Doki. This was a huge opportunity for Doki because he has never defeated Hiromu Takahashi in a singles match. And he brought it in this match. Especially, you know, coming out of the gate with the offense, getting the preemptive strike on Hiromu Takahashi. And then these two, they just duped it out. I mean, there were so many times where Doki locked in the Doki Chokey on Hiromu, and Hiromu's fighting spirit was just maximum level. And these two just went back and forth, traded moves, trade like traded counters, and both were on their A game. Both were definitely on their A game. And it really could have gone either way. But Doki would just not be denied. Lost so many times in singles matches to Hiromu, to Hiromu, but this time he would not be denied as he was able to put away Hiromu 
with a suplex de la luna for the one, two, three. And Doki gets his first singles victory ever against Hiromu Takahashi. First, first time he has been able to defeat him. Finally. Finally was able to defeat him. So that was huge. That was very big for Doki. Congratulations, a hard-fought victory. And this was my favorite match of the card. For night two, definitely my favorite match. Alrighty. Let's go to our next match. Continuing on with the series. All right, this time we had LIJ Shingo Takaki against Just Five Guys Taichi. Now, of course, we know there's a lot of history between these two. These two have faced each other so many times, like, I don't even know what number this is with the number of times these two have faced off against each other. But it never gets old between these two. These two always deliver high-level matches, and this was no different. Hard-hitting, back and forth, and it really... It really could have gone either way. Could have gone either way, and these two never disappoint. Looked like Shingo was going to go for a pumping bomber, but Taichi was able to catch him off guard, hit him with a drop kick, and then was able to finish him with a dangerous backdrop, pinning him for the 1 2 3, and Taichi gets a big victory over Shingo. Now, I do believe Shingo normally uh, leads the series of matches between the between them, but this was a big victory for Taichi, and yeah, both these men look great. They looked awesome in this match, but like I said, they're used to that. Alrighty, let's go to our next match, and this too was a big match. Check it out. Alrighty, this was the big hair versus hair match. As this came down to LIJ's Yoda Suji versus Just Five Guys Heat Storm Yuya Uemura. Now, with the way this match went, like, honestly, it could have gone either way. And it just, this match really went the distance. It went the distance. These two have had quite a rivalry. And just, I feel like the last number of matches they've had, whether it's singles matches or tag matches, just did not compare to night two of the new beginning in Sapporo. I mean, this really, I think this might have closed the chapter between these two, and it did in a huge way, in a really huge way, but man, these two really delivered a high-level match, and honestly, this, this could be argued as match of the card. This could definitely be argued that. It was back and forth, very intense. At first, it seemed like Yoda Suji had a lot of the momentum, but then once Yuya got going, I mean, he just really brought it. And then it started to be a lot more back and forth. But when it mattered the most, the one opening necessary, and Yoda Suji was able to capitalize with a gene blaster. Spear to Yuyo Mora just out of nowhere. Like, moment, bam, Gene Blaster. One, two, three. Yoda Suji picks up the victory, and therefore, according to the stipulation, Yuyo Mora must get his head shaved. Which, I mean, they did some of it. And then he did some of it, and then he left out the ring, which I'm sure the next time we see him, his whole head will be shaved. But, yeah, quite an end 
to a rivalry there between Yoda Suji and Yuya Uemura. Like I said, it could have really gone either way. And while Yuya Uemura got the best of Yoda Suji, last singles match they had, Suji got the ultimate revenge and the big one that, that counts the most. So, Yoda Suji stands tall with a handful of Yuya Uemura's hand, hair. So. And then the main event. Main event of the new beginning in Sapporo Night 2. We had ourselves a Wrestle Kingdom run back. That's right. The rematch for the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. As Tetsuya Naito of LIJ defends against former champion of Just Five Guys, Sonata. Well, first off, I gotta say, shout out to Sonata rocking the uh, Keiji Muto orange gear. I thought that was really cool to see. And, you know, these two put on a, another great match. Definitely went back and forth. Um, even saw them trade finishers. Uh, we saw some shining wizards and just both these guys tearing each other apart. Just didn't like the finish. That's that's my only complaint. I just didn't like the finish. Uh, Tetsuya Naito looked like he was going for a uh, springboard tornado DDT, but pretty much turned it into a springboard, pretty much into a small package, and then pinned Sonata that way for the one, two, three. So, not a fan of the finish, but... It was still a, a solid match, but I have to say their Wrestle Kingdom match was better. I have to say their Wrestle Kingdom match was better. But Tetsuya Naito, still your IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. And they had a nice little funny segment at the end with uh, him and Okada, because Okada was on uh, Japanese uh, pro wrestling commentary team, special guest commentary, and he came in. And they had a little exchange, you know, went to do the fist bump and attacked Okada, did an Irish whip, looked like Naito was going to get hit with a uh, Rainmaker, and then he ended up doing the Tranquilo. Just, just a nice little segment there, just as part of a farewell to Okada, just to mess with him, because, you know, Naito always liked messing with Okada. So that was really cool to see. But... Being that Naito successfully defended the title, looks like he might be doing the same thing at Windy City Riot against John Moxley. So we'll have to wait and see. No official word, but he is interested in defending that title against John Moxley if he successfully defended against Sonata, which he did. So hey, I think it's happening. I think it's happening. But we'll wait and see uh, the official word. But great two-night show for the new beginning in Sapporo for New Japan Pro Wrestling. Um, I have to say, even though night one had more title matches, I honestly think I like night two better. I, I like night two better. I know Night 2 only had one title match, but I think the quality of the wrestling was better in Night 2. That's that's what I think. Um, before I go, just a, um, a quick check on the schedule for upcoming New Japan Pro Wrestling events. So next up, we got the anniversary event. That's March 6th, which where, where it is... Um, we're going to get the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion versus the Junior Heavyweight Champion. So that means Tetsuya Naito versus Sho. So we're going to get that match. That should be that should be interesting. Um, and then, day afterwards, the New Japan Cup begins, which... 
I wonder when they're gonna. They're probably gonna announce the competitors for that tournament next week. That's what I'm thinking. But New Japan Cup starts March 7th, and then the finals is on March 20th. So keep an eye out for that. And then the road to Sakura Genesis starts March 30th, and then uh, that goes up to uh, April 4th. And then Sakura Genesis 2024 is Saturday, April 6th, so that's during WrestleMania weekend. And then the weekend after that is Windy City Riot in Chicago. That's April 12th, um, which tickets sold out like crazy for that. But I think they said they were going to open up more seats if, that, if they haven't already done that. Um, the Road to Wrestling Dantaku uh, starts April 20th. And it goes to the, the first half of it goes to the 27th. Then they got uh, Wrestling Satsuma no Kuni. That is April 29th. And then they finish up the road to Wrestling do Dantaku on April 30th and May 1st. And then Wrestling Dantaku, the event itself, it's a, it's a two-night event. May 3rd and May 4th will be in Fukuoka. So, got that. And then they also announced... Uh, NJPW Strong Resurgence, which that will be in Canada May 11th, in to yeah, in Ontario at the Toyota Arena in uh, Canada. So that's May 11th. So that's what we got for the upcoming schedule for uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling. So a lot to look forward to, and as I said before, tournament season is hot. And New Japan Cup's right around the corner. So, there's a lot to look forward to. But, that'll do it for this video. Um, don't forget to check out the link to Game Beauty in the description. And, overall, let me know what y'all thought of the new beginning in Sapporo. Nights 1 and 2. What did you think of the matches? Which night did you like better? Night 1 or Night 2? Let me know your thoughts. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell while you're at it. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. For another Pro Wrestling Talk, brought to you by Blitzball Champ Gaming here on the U to the Tube. I'm your host, Blitzball Champ, Jason Ingram. Hope everybody has a blessed rest of the weekend, and I will see y'all in the next video. Peace. Later.